coach, coo, coach, coo, coach, coo, the coach, coo, show, coach, coo, coach, coo, coach, coo, the coach, coo, show. going on canes fans and my college football family you know i'm fashionably late to each and every stream and this is done on purpose i've told you guys my motto be a little late to everything and then it's not abnormal when you're late to things people say oh that that's cool he's he's five minutes late every single day this is normal and you can apply that to just about anything, being crazy as well. I've also used this analogy. If you regularly strip down butt naked and run up and down your street, it slowly starts to become normal. You, hey, that's 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 Chris Gaffney. He's he's naked again. This is he does this every Wednesday afternoon. Uh, yep, about two thirty. Yeah, this completely normal. Just just ignore him. It'll be over in a few minutes. And you just, you know, continue to do those things. Then nobody thinks anything of it. However, I will say I was a little extra late tonight. And that's because I've had a, a little bit of a distraction this week. So here in a few minutes, I'm going to introduce you to our new dog. So I did... We did adopt a dog this week. We went to a couple of different shelters and we sat with some new dogs or some different dogs. And we just could, we couldn't get this guy off our mind. So we ended up going back earlier this week. We picked him up. Uh, it's been great so far. It's been great so far. Uh, he, you'll see. You'll see. He has taken over both couches in the house, including the one where we film the couch coop confessions you know the final thoughts videos during the season i'm still going to film those on the couch but i'm going to be sharing it with him because he has claimed it it's his and he's chilling over there right now so i'm going to give people a few minutes to find their virtual seats and then i will introduce the new doggo because of the dog this might be a little bit of a shorter stream tonight just because your boy coop is tired it's been a pretty exhausting week, lots of changes. You know, I've had to change up my schedule a bit and keeping an eye on him. What kind of dog? I want to see your guesses when I show him. I'll show him here in, in probably maybe five minutes or so. We'll small talk here for a few minutes. But it's good to see everybody here tonight, right and early for the stream. We're going to talk about my personal picks for spring sleepers this season. So this is going to be players that... I feel like maybe some fans aren't talking about as much that I think could shock some people this season, could make an impact on the field in 2024. Uh, Briley, what's good, man? Keep repping your squad. I have to say, though, Briley, that you was looking real good. It, lo it, it looks like it's supposed to be there. So are you sure that you don't want to maybe reconsider your allegiance? It's never too late to root for the Canes, ever. And we're always ready and willing to welcome you with open arms as long as it's before kickoff of the very first game of the season. So each and every year, kind of like, you know, there's a transfer portal window. Well, there's a portal window for fans that if you want to jump on the bandwagon, it's okay, you can do it. There is a little short application process, but I can email you or DM you that. And you can you can come on down. You just let me know. We got Crip in the building. Good to see my man Crip in here. Chris Kane for life. I'd like to see your picks, Chris. I'd like to see your sleeper picks. We got my man Juice. 
Henry in here representing Louisville. Canes Football Talk. Appreciate you promoting the like button. Thank you, thank you, my man. Randy. I know Randy was dancing a little jig, probably twerking a bit during the intro. Uh, Steven, what's up from a very snowy Colorado Springs? Got a foot today. A foot of snow? That's crazy, Steven, because this week weather-wise in Tennessee has been very weird. It's it's mid-March, and it was 80 degrees yesterday. I was I, I literally shorts and a t-shirt yesterday. And then next week, it's going to be like 30 degrees. It's so messed up. If you come to Tennessee, you got to bring every type of outfit for every season. If you're going to be here more than two or three days, it's just how it is. Stephanie, my UM wife. Stephanie, I can't wait for you to meet the new doggo. You're going to love him. Nick, same goes for you, Nick. I extend that same offer. You want to become a Canes fan? Come on down. It's only March. Plenty of time. Thomas Carter in the building. If I'm missing anybody, blanket thank yous for being here. Colby! Is this is this is the mustard throwing Colby, correct? I just want to make sure because it looks like your profile pic is different. Colby, I appreciate you being here, my man. Chris Gaffney in the building. Bobby, Sage, Brian Humphrey. Appreciate y'all. For real, for real. Appreciate y'all. Man, it looks so good. Look at that. Look how good that looks. You named the dog Manny Diaz. <laughs> Talk about setting him up for failure if I were to do that. We can't do that to him. We can't do that to the new doggo. Oh, man. Oh, uh, here he is. Here he this is. is what it takes to wear to you. Yo. I'm sorry, your helmet. Late because you were watching the FSU baseball game still undefeated. You want to know what I think about Florida State baseball, Joel? I have I have the perfect sound effect in place. Ready to go. And on my soundboard, it's labeled FSU. And I'm going to press it. Do you want to see what sound it makes? It literally says FSU on my soundboard. There's a single button off to the very far right of my my soundboard, and it says FSU. And I'm gonna press it. Let's see what it is. Joe Davis, my man, Joe. That's that. That's not the sound effect. That, that's not it. That's not it. That's for Joel, not Florida State. With the 99, 99, the ever generous Mr. Joel Davis putting him atop his throne right out of the gate. And, and speaking of Joel, this is also from Joel. A custom Miami Cup with my own name on it from a Florida State fan. Isn't that crazy? Look, it's got the grip, you know, so so we don't drop it. It beautiful cup, that nice U logo on it. Dang, you need one of these, Joel. It, it everything out of this thing tastes just a little bit better. It tastes just a little bit better out of this cup for some reason. If I had to guess, it's the color. It's it's the color and the logo on here. As I said, if I seem distracted, guys, it's because the doggo is in the room. So he's like running around and he's playing. He's still trying to adjust to being a streamer dog. So he he doesn't know how all this works yet. He's still learning. Let's sit Joel atop his throne. You absolute madman. We're not even 15 minutes into the stream. And he comes in. Showing massive support on a Friday night. How's your Friday been, Joel? Actually, how's your week been? How's your whole week been? Not just today. Whole freaking week, Joel. Oh, but uh, the, the Florida State button. The Florida State button. Let's press it. Um, uh, Let's see. Let me look at my soundboard. Florida State. I forgot what sound it makes. Let's press it. That's what it was. I couldn't. I, I couldn't remember. I just knew that I had a Florida State button on there. Something that, so, something that represents that entire program. Uh, pretty accurately, if I do say so myself. 
Does it sound like a, to a, a toilet flushing? Well, the thing you do right before that, Chris, so you were pretty close. I think Nick got it. I think Nick got it right. It literally says Florida State. It does. So many U's. Looks real nice. It does. It looks real freaking nice. Growing the fam. So many Canes fam. In the building. Hey, appreciate you, Duck. <laughs> appropriate? Very appropriate. So as I said tonight, we're going to be talking spring sleepers. Uh, my personal list. And we'll dive deep into it. Lucky for you guys, I prepared another PowerPoint presentation for tonight. Since it was such a hit the last time we did this, I figured why not make another PowerPoint. Spent all day making it special just for my college football family. So everyone has that to look forward to tonight. So without further ado, should I introduce you guys to the new family member? Oh, Mama Coop is saying hey to Joel. There it is. Mama Coop saying hey to Joel. We got Mama Coop in the building. Mama Coop, I'm about to introduce everyone to the new doggo. My mom hasn't met him yet either. She's seen him, but she hasn't met him. So I'll let you guys know the name. He's got a great name. And I'll let you guys, I'm going to I'm gonna introduce you. I'm going to introduce you to him. So here we go. As I said, you're part of my family. He's now part of the family which means you kind of sort of also adopted him. Just so you know. I didn't ask for permission. I didn't ask for input, but uh, he's part of the family now. So let's swap over to this camera. Here it is. And I'm just going to slowly, I'm just going to slowly point it at him. Here we go. Right now he's on the couch. I told you guys he's taking over the couch. Let's see if he'll look. There it is. There it is. Oh, oh, he's kissing you guys. That's a good start. Look at him. Look at him. Come on. How can you not love him? He's big chilling right now. We'll we'll see if we can we'll see if we can can give him a treat, but as you can see, he's taken over the couch. I know this camera quality is kind of low. It's dark in here. Look at him. He's about a year and a half, maybe slightly under. We know that he's he's le he's less than two, but uh, we adopted him from the uh, a local animal shelter. So they don't know for sure exactly what breed he is, but he's some sort of bully breed. He's got a big old head on him. Big paws, but some sort of bully breed. Somebody had clipped his ears. I I wouldn't have done that. Uh, I'm not a fan of that, but that that's how he was when we adopted him. And he's super sweet. He's so freaking sweet. I'll see if I can get him off the couch and we'll give him a treat. We've only had him for three days. So new new pupper. He he's gonna play a big part on the channel. He he's gonna be what we're gonna do is when the football season gets here. I'm going to have him make picks for each game. And then we're going to compare his picks to my picks. And we're going to see who gets closer. So for his name, by the way, his name is Maxwell Wigglesworth. But for sure, if you guys just want to call him Maxwell, or if you just want to call him Max or Maxi, anything like that. But his full name, his full official name is Maxwell Wigglesworth. And... Really, he asked that people refer to him as Sir Maxwell Wigglesworth. But that that's his request, not me. He's a little sleepy boy. He's had a long day. He's a good boy, though. So, like I said, some kind of bully breed. Let's we'll see if we'll give him a treat. That'll get him excited. You want a treat? Ooh, come here. Come here. Can you see it? Can you see it? Yeah, good boy. Stay. Good boy. Here you go. Good boy. Good boy. All right, we'll give him one more. We'll get we'll give him one more from the stream. Yeah, come here. Sit. Come on, guys. He's the cutest doggo ever, right? Come on now. Look, look, that's why his wiggles worth right there. Oh, oh, sit. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. 
So that's him. That's him, guys. This is what it take <laughs> to wear the U on the side of your helmet. Coop, you can pawn off your bean orders to the dog. That won't count. This what do you mean that won't count? Sure it does. To wear the U on the side of your helmet. That counts. Turn the dog around and lift his tail so we can see Uncle Lou. <laughs> He's so interested. <laughs> oh, that was a good one. Okay, that's that's a pretty good one here. That was a pretty good one. He just doesn't know what to think about all this. All the cameras and the lights. We're going to fatten him up. They found him hurt in the road. And no one claimed him. The vet fixed him all up. Yeah, it looks like he's got socks on. And he's just so freaking sweet, y'all. Like, he, he listens. He, he tries to listen. Even now, he's looking. He's waiting for direction. So he, he's looking. He, he just wants to know what you want him to do. Such a sweet doggo. Yeah. I love his big old head. I love that big old pit head. Yeah. You're going to be a stream doggo. Mm-hmm. He's thinking, man, what what, what did I sign up for? Look, look, look at all these crazy people in here. What the heck did I sign up for? My man, Chris Gaffney, coming through with the $4.99. I think that we should put up a poll and we'll see if that counts. I think that's what we should do, Chris. That, that's just my opinion. Appreciate the four ninety nine, Chris. Joel with another ninety nine ninety nine with the joke of the night. Well done, well done. Got him. I think someone should clip that and send it to Uncle Lou because I don't think it gets much better than that. I uh, fantastic joke, great joke, Joel. <laughs> Joel with the ninety nine ninety nine times two. To where do you? On the side of your helmet. This is for treats for Sir Max. Tucci! Tucci, everything with the cheesecake has been confirmed. I'm literally just waiting on it to arrive at this point, and I'm so excited. I'm excited. My wife's excited. I told her about it. We can't wait to try an actual cheesecake that's not frozen great value brand that's literally this big. I can't wait. Tucci! Thank you for the 15, my man. Treats for Sir Max. He greatly appreciates that. We bought him a, a butt ton of toys, man. He's got multiple blankets. He's got two different beds. Like, this dog is going to be spooled, man. We have no kids. We have no other dogs. But I know I've spent the last 20 minutes talking about the new doggo, but I'm excited. I said he's part of the fam. He's going to be in videos and stuff, and he's going to make a lot of appearances. So uh, I hope you guys like him because he's yours too. <clears throat> Doo doo, what's up? Give him a toy gator to chew on. Joel, you are on one tonight. Great idea. Great idea. That is the best $100 jerk joke I have heard all week. It was really good. It was actually really, really good. So we're waiting on Mama Coop's got to come meet him. I think Max is part cow. I could see it. Yeah, I could definitely see the part cow part. He eats like a cow. This dog is a bottomless pit when it comes to food. He just eats and eats and eats and eats. Uh, you need, yeah, you need real cheesecake in life sometimes. Just make sure Max doesn't eat it all. <laughs> yeah, he's he's a little piglet. He's a little piglet. My, Can I be honest? And we'll get into the football talk. My only complaint with him so far, three days in, this dog snores so loud. The very first night, I couldn't sleep because he was snoring so loud. And he, he'll just be out. He, he'll be playing, and then he'll lay, he'll lay his head down on the couch, and then it's literally just, just so super loud. So it's going to take me a little bit possibly to get used to that. But he's a snorer for sure. He definitely is. What's up, Michael? Good to see you in the building. The dog already has an NIL contract. Yep. Yep, everybody's putting in into the treat fund. Ain't that right, Max? Sir Maxwell Wigglesworth. Probably couldn't sleep much in the shelter. Now he's catching up. It's very possible. Yeah, he, he seems like he's adjusting well, though. So he, he's, he's, not, um, he's not acting super shy or anything. 
He's he's super playful. So he seems to be adjusting well. Does the doggo also get fresh baked dog treats when the canes lose? Be careful, that'll fatten him up. Well, you know. Hopefully this season there won't be a whole lot of baking going down in my house. You know? He looks like your boy. I'll need to tag me on Twitter. Uh BWFLD, type me on Twitter. I'd like to see. So, anyways, uh, if anyone else comes in and wants to see the doggo, just let me know. He's going to be hanging out in the room here with us. So, let's let's go ahead and dive into it. Spring sleepers. Just keep in mind, quick disclaimer, that there are other players that I could put on this list. But these are just kind of five that stood out to me specifically and I'm going to give you some reasons as to why here in just a moment. I put together a little presentation. We'll pull it up and we'll talk about it. But uh, week one spring practice finished up. Obviously, they were off all this week. There's going to be 15 practices in total, three down. Next practice kicks off on Tuesday the 19th. So this next coming up Tuesday. But I want to talk about some players that I feel like maybe aren't getting mentioned as much. Now, there might be some sites in different places you see them talking about these players, but not as much that I'm seeing specifically, and I feel like they could potentially make an impact for the reasons that I'm about to give. And then what I want to do is I want to see your feedback on these if you think that these players are being slept on. And then at the end, I want you guys to give me some of yours, and then we can go through and, and talk about each one of them. So again, thank you to everybody who showed up here early for the stream tonight. Thank you for everybody popping off. And we, we've not even got to the football talk yet, man. So I appreciate y'all very much. Let's jump over. And my very first player that I have down as a sleeper. You try to call, but it goes straight to voicemail. We, we probably won't take phone calls tonight. We'll probably just go, we'll probably just one-on-one -on -one with the with the chat. So my first spring sleeper for the season, and this actually shocks me that I put this on here because I very rarely do this, but a potential spring sleeper here is actually the freshman linebacker Cam Pruitt. I very rarely put freshmen on lists like this because usually it's experience first. So every single season, like let, let's be honest and real about it as Canes fans. I know every fan base does this, but Canes fans really do this. We bring in these big-time recruiting classes, especially with Mario, and we talk about how impactful it, all of these freshmen are going to be when the reality is most of them will see very limited playtime during the season. They're typically going to go with the guy that has experience, and they might get some garbage time snaps. Uh, there might be some cleanup duty Maybe they have some opportunities to earn a little bit of playing time, but typically not significant playing time. I'm very excited to watch Cam Pruitt throughout the rest of spring, though, for the reasons that I have listed here. He is an old school play style, the way that he plays linebacker. He is a hard hitter. This man runs downhill. And it's something that we'll have to watch and make sure that it doesn't get him in trouble during the season. But when you watch this man, he loves to hit. He's super physical. He's also super instinctive. You can tell he has a nose for the football. He's, he's oftentimes around the ball. Very exciting to watch. He's super fast. Actually kind of surprisingly fast. Leading with a freshman linebacker, if this dude is seeing enough minutes to be an impactful sleeper, Miami is in trouble. You have to remember, no particular order here, and I'm just saying people are possibly sleeping on him. The linebacker room, right, like we know that we have uh, Mauanoa back there, but otherwise, in my opinion, there's a lot of question marks. Will Basaint step up? He's been around the program for a while but never made a huge impact. What about uh, Chase Smith? He's just kind of been MIA and disappeared. We have guys that were hyped on like uh, Popo and potentially Washington, but those guys are unproven. This guy is someone that the coaching staff is very high on. Sleeper doesn't mean that I think they're going to start. It doesn't even mean that I think they're going to see significant play time. I guess I need to put that out there. None, me saying sleeper doesn't mean that, 
To some people it might, but to me it's not. I'm just saying that I think that when they're on the field, when they see playing time, if they do, I think that they can be impactful, and I don't see a whole lot of people talking about them. Because let's, let's talk about the linebacker room for a second. Everybody's talking about Popo. Everything's, every article I see is mentioning Popo. And, you know, will Malik Bryant take the next step? How's Maui Noah going to look whenever he heals up? I'm not seeing a ton of talk about Cam Pruitt. Uh, he's a run stopper and can defend the pass. And right now, but yo, we already know this, but for the people who don't listen, we have to say another disclaimer. It's early in spring. Super duper early. They're not in full pads yet. They've literally had three practices. Uh, but he is seeing a lot of reps with the ones right now in the first couple of spring practices. He is a freshman. Uh, obviously, he needs some time to adjust to the speed of things at the college level. And ideally, he needs to put on a little more weight. I think I had noted he's around 190 pounds right now. So preferably 10 to 15-ish pounds. Try to get him to that 205 to 215 range. Uh, so he could possibly put on a little bit of weight. He had a lot of offers from SEC schools that he turned down. Bama, uh, LSU, Ole Miss, Florida, Tennessee, Mizzou. They were looking for those big, strong, physical linebackers. And he chose Miami. And the coaching staff is is really hyped with how he's been playing so far in spring. Uh, you're right. There are a bunch of question marks. Linebacker needs a portal addition. Somebody with rotational P5 experience, but there's definitely a void at linebacker. Exactly. Yep. And I got a lot of pushback on that because I said that was one of my areas of concern, which we talked about in either last week's stream or the stream before. And a lot of people said, nah, linebacker, I think we're good. But there's some, there is some question marks there. There's some guys that have been within the program that haven't really made an impact. There's Malanoa, who's going to be coming off of the surgery, off the injury, but he should be fine. And then there's a bunch of young guys. So we're going to see. But those guys definitely, right. We know, I know, the Power 5 thing, it is funny, though. That is funny because technically, right, with all these the super conference thing going down, we're going to have to change it, right? That is kind of funny when we think about it. But Cam Pruitt is actually on my list here in no particular order. But the next one here is one that you guys are going to say isn't fair probably to put as a sleeper pick. But I actually think that it is for a couple of reasons. And that's tied in to Elijah Arroyo. I know you guys get sick and tired of hearing Coop say, it's time for the Arroyo show. When the reality is he's only had 11 total receptions in three years. He's been a Miami Hurricane for three seasons, and he has 11 total receptions. He stayed injured, unfortunately. Uh, it's been a, a really tough road for him during his time here at Miami. Been here since 2021. Struggled to stay healthy. But here's some good news. So far in spring, Cam Ward has been targeting him a lot. We obviously want to try to be known as tight end you once again. A lot of people feel like we lost that in 2023, and understandably so, because we really didn't throw to the tight ends very often. This will be Arroyo's fourth year at the college level, so he has a ton of experience, and it's year two in this specific offense. So even though he was still banged up a lot last season and, and struggled with the injuries, He's still able to study the offense, and he did get to practice in it some. So year two within the same offense. And I do believe that he has better hands than Cam McCormick. McCormick is always kind of known to be that blocking tight end. And I think that Arroyo's hands are probably a little bit better. The number one issue, of course, just comes back to the exact same thing. Can he stay injury-free? So see, 11 reception sleeper, but again... We have to look at, I don't, I don't have that data at the moment, but we have to look at his actual receptions versus how many times he was targeted. And then we have to look at how many snaps he saw because Arroyo overall has had almost no play time over his last three seasons. So I am kind of plugging him in as a sleeper and it's, it's due to this reason right here. Since he's seen such limited play time, a lot of fans at this point are just writing him off. 
everybody's talking about Riley Williams. Everybody's talking about Lofton, who's kind of that like tight end, almost fullback hybrid, and a lot of the younger guys in that room. So due to that reason, I'm kind of putting Arroyo as a sleeper because not many people are talking about him. They're looking at the younger guys. Riley Williams is in year two. And the thing is, let's be honest, if Arroyo can't stay healthy, he could very easily get jumped by Riley Williams. We know Cam McCormick is going to be starting. Bro, let's be real. Cam McCormick followed Mario over from Oregon. They play him a ton. The dude's, uh, he isn't he? He's almost 30-something years old, I believe, right? He's like mid-20s, a little higher. If Arroyo can't stay healthy, Riley Williams could absolutely jump him, however. But I do believe that Arroyo will see a ton of play time. And I do have him as a potential spring sleeper. Just, he's got to stay healthy. And I want to actually say a Royo show and mean it. I'm hoping. I'm hoping this is the year. He keeps saying, I feel like Elijah Arroyo. Finally, after all this time. So we'll see. And bring in, that's fine. That's fine. Bring in, bring in the, the trolling. Trust me, I, I don't know if he's going to fix it. I played that video the other night of uh, Dawson when he made the joke about talking about how he's hyped up about the tight end room. And then he said, hey, m- maybe you guys will stop asking me to throw to the tight ends. <laughs> well, we start throwing to the tight ends more then yeah, Dawson. Yeah. P- fans will stop asking you to throw to the tight ends. You're right. What's going on, Sage? Good to see you, man. Next up. On spring sleepers. Do I want to do this one? I mean, I've already made the slide. He's on my list. I think I just got to do it. I think I, I, I think I've just got to do it. Because this is one that I don't know if people are going to agree on. So let's just see. Your boy Coop does have the transfer quarterback from Albany, Reese Poffenbarger. That's right. Some people call him Poff. Some people call him the Poff Meister. Some people call him Reese. He's a man of many names. What I do know is that he's a Miami Hurricane. And I have him on my list as a spring sleeper. And the reason being is because he showed a very strong arm in the first week. Full disclaimer. Same thing. No pads yet. We know that. So let's see if it actually translates over once it's live football. Guys are in pads. Then we'll see when he's got pressure in his face. Because this is a a totally different level of football. So we know that there's a little bit of an adjustment period here. The competition level is higher. And really, he's he's most likely competing with Jakari Brown for that number two spot in the quarterback room. Again, we believe that they'll probably redshirt Emery. They'll, they'll redshirt Judd. So that leaves that number two spot as a battle of Jakari Brown versus Reese Poffenbarger. Dude is a straight gamer. Got a baller attitude. He loves to compete. He's kind of coming in with a chip on his shoulder. You nailed it. You nailed it, Crip. And this dude has a surprisingly strong arm. I really honestly didn't expect it. A very strong arm. If anything, you don't have to worry about him under-throwing receivers. He needs to dial it back a bit. So that's something he's going to hit the receivers in stride or possibly overthrow them. So hopefully he can kind of get that under control a bit. But the accuracy is there. Throws on the move with ease. This guy's super mobile. And I think that he's a close match to Cam Ward's play style, which makes it an easy transition when it comes to game planning. So when we're talking about the offense here, you know, we think about when we had Tyler Van Dyke and then let's say Jakari as the number two guy. Well, Dawson might have to change up that offense a little bit because that's two totally different skill sets. Right now, the potential one, two, three is very similar. So you're going to have Cam Ward, who's, you know, super mobile, graded extending plays, pretty strong arm. 
I think all of those things also apply to Reese Poffenbarger. All of those things also apply to Jakari Brown. So if I were to put out a, a way too early, here's my personal opinion on how I think they'll do the quarterback situation. As long as Reese Poffenbarger continues to have a strong spring and Jakari does relatively well, because you got to remember, Jakari has experience at this level already. This is a step up for Reese. But Reese has got a bit of an attitude. He's, he sees that as a little bit disrespectful. He's going to come out and, and he's going to fight for that number two spot and he expects to get it. He believes that he will. I think that the quarterback situation to keep everyone happy is probably, let me know what you think. I think that they're going to go kind of political mode here. I don't know if that's the right way to put it. I think it'll be obviously Cam Ward. But then I think number two is going to be one of those 2A, 2B. It's going to be Jakari Brown or Reese Poffenbarger. Or you could, you could vice versa. You could, you could say Reese Poffenbarger or Jakari Brown. Now, when it comes time to actually make a decision, they're going to have to figure that out. Is it going to be based on, uh, you know, the, the type of defense that the other team runs, even though they have similar play styles, maybe how they practice that week? I don't know. We'll have to see. But I have Reese Poffenbarger as a potential spring sleeper, and I do think that he'll battle for that number two spot. Obviously, no one is going to win the number one spot. Here's the thing that people have to remember. So people are saying, oh, well, this guy's going to transfer. That guy's going to transfer. He was never going to get the number one spot. Period. Like they, I know they brought him in before Cam Ward, but they knew that some stuff was going on with Cam Ward. So they might have had Reese as a backup if it did backfire with Cam, but there were conversations going on behind the scenes. So I don't think they told Reese, hey, we didn't get Cam we need you to come in and compete for the number one spot. I think that this was a huge opportunity for him, a step up in competition, and he has a chance to prove himself at a higher level. So I personally don't see him transferring out, especially if he can hit that number two spot. Now, it might be different if they release that depth chart and they say, hey, uh, you know, Cam, Jakari, and then Reese or somehow falls even lower, which probably won't happen given the, the red chart situation. But Reese, Reese, man, it has a very strong showing so far. Very, very strong showing. And I know that's why it was kind of weird to put him as a sleeper. But I am seeing a lot of other people that are just straight disrespecting and, and dogging him because he came from Albany. Like, his stats at Albany were pretty good. 3,614 yards, 36 touchdowns, and 13 interceptions last season. But it was Albany. So as we said, we have to see if it translates to this level. And then we also have to see about once the pads go on. Once he's got a little more pressure in his face. So we'll find out. Reese is number two, in my opinion, from what I've seen from him versus JB in spring. But like you said, we'll see when the pads are on. Exactly. Exactly. But I'm a, I'm a huge fan of this guy. I like the way that he operates. I do. Kid has an arm. He does. It's, it's a lot bigger than I thought. I'm not going to lie. A lot bigger arm than I thought it would be when he was coming in. What do you mean? No, no, no. Reese was sold on competing for the number one. Then Cam came in. Now he's competing for number two. Some other school is going to pay him to be number one. Now, it's not impossible, but... I'm telling you that they already knew Cam was going to come back and, and choose Miami. I know he put out the video about he's going to the NFL and this and that, but they didn't bring Poffenbarger in because Cam said no. I know that a lot of people think that. It's fine. I would understand that that's what makes the most sense on the surface, but this was a, a potential backup if it did stay that way. But they had a very good idea that Cam Ward was still going to come to Miami, even after the announcement. So I don't think that they, I don't think that's the case, but that's just my opinion. As I said, maybe we'll find out. If he transfers, then hey, I was wrong. But I, I don't think that he does. And we'll see, but we'll see. I'll just leave it at that. My next sleeper pick 
is a wide receiver, actually. And this is a guy that got a ton of attention last season, but I'm not seeing a lot of people talk about this season. See, and that's more what I was thinking, Michael. If, if it wasn't for what he said on the Momentum podcast, if JB took an entire year off in 2023 to say, I'm going to redshirt, I want to improve my game and come out strong in 2024. If he ends up in an, an and or situation at two, that could be a little telling. That could mean maybe I won't be that number one guy in 2025. So maybe he looks for opportunities elsewhere. Could be. There are definitely, however, I am going to say this, Briley. There, there is going to be an exodus. And it's not just Miami. This is going to happen with a lot of teams. When, but when that, that next transfer portal window opens, guys that thought they had a real shot to find themselves up at the top of the depth chart, they end up at you know three or four or beyond. There are going to be some guys that transfer. And Miami actually does need room at some other positions. That, that we're a little thin right now. So this will be this will be a good thing. We need to make room. But there are going to be some guys that leave, so don't freak out. It's going to happen. It's going to happen for just about every team, but it's definitely going to happen for Miami. That's going to be the case. Coach Coop, I know you see I have been a fan for a while, going through all the emotions during live streams. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a roller coaster ride for sure. Hold the phone. Hold up. Pause the stream. Pause the stream. If it isn't Mr. Peanut Roll Tide. <laughs> hey, Peanut, where you been? Peanut, I haven't seen you since Alabama lost to Michigan. In the college football playoffs. Are you finally out of jail? How long would that have been? So you had the cops called on you during the stream. So it's it's been like two months. Crying over his coach leaving. Uh-oh. Is Peanut not a fan of the new coach? Did Peanut, did Peanut just post bail? <laughs> Peanut! People have been asking about you. People have been asking where Peanut has been. We talked about you last Friday. We go live every Friday, and people were like, where's Peanut? Where's Peanut? Where's he been? He finally showed his face once again. And please keep that stuff coming. You guys know, Briley, Nick, uh, other fellow Canes fans, like, I love the back and forth. So don't think whenever I address each one specifically, if I'm like, I don't agree. Like, you you guys know I like that stuff. Reese balled out in FCS. He gets experience in FBS. He can ball out too. JB hasn't shown he can ball. I, it is in, it's a very interesting situation. It definitely is. That's why I can't wait until the pads go on. And maybe we see some clips from scrimmages. We hear some stats. Spring game goes down. I kind of want to see how things shape up after that. But I, I, I'm telling you, there are a lot of people that are very hype on Reese Poffenbarger. Absolutely. Exodus equals NIL. Uh, yeah, and I mean, I don't blame people. If I'm not going to start and I felt like I could somewhere else, I'd probably look for op other opportunities. Probably would. My next potential spring sleeper is wide receiver Ray Ray Joseph. As I said, a lot of people were very high on this guy last season. People kept saying, okay, hey, this guy's going to take Restrepo's job. This guy's going to see a ton of playing time. He's so fast. There's no way this coaching staff doesn't use him. Ray Ray is the perfect example of when we say someone can come in and be very talented and have a lot of potential, but typically experience goes to the top. So Ray Ray didn't see a whole lot of playing time this last season. He actually only ended with six receptions. Yeah, I've, I've, Coop, look at the look at the slide. You did your homework on the slide, Coop. Six total receptions in 2023. He didn't see a lot of playing time. 
Don't let that make you think that he was on the field and he didn't catch a lot of footballs. He didn't see a whole lot of playing time. He was a freshman in 2023. But people were very high on him because he had a strong spring last year and he showed out in the spring game. This year, however, is year two in Dawson's offense, so he should be dialed in. The guy definitely has dangerous speed. We've seen it on display when he has been in a game. He's great at tracking the ball. He did flash in the 2023 spring game, which, as I said, got a lot of Canes fans excited and everybody was talking about Ray Ray. I do hopefully expect to see him either returning punts or returning kickoffs because as much as I love that Restrepo is solid, the dude has certified hands, and I know that he fielded a lot of punts last season because if there's a guy back there that you want fair catching the ball, it's Restrepo. If there's a guy that you want to give you a shot at taking it to the house, it's this man right here, Ray Ray. So I think that we should expect to see Ray Ray get some more special teams play this season. A lot of it comes down to Mario Cristobal's mindset with the young guys. And this is year two for him. So with the with more experience, with it being the second year in the offense, he's had another year in the strength and conditioning program. He's put on a, a tiny bit of weight here. He's gotten stronger. This could be a huge year for Ray Ray. And I mentioned him also as a spring sleeper because, again, we kind of get fascinated with the shiny new toy. Again, the young guys coming in. So right now, everyone's talking about JoJo Trader and Nye Carr. Specifically, when it comes to the comparisons, probably with Ray Ray would probably be Nye Carr. I think Ray Ray's about 5'10". Nye Carr is about 6 foot on the dot. So Carr can do kind of inside or outside. But a lot of people are only talking about Nikar, JoJo, the big catches from Restrepo. And Ray Ray has been practicing really well. He practiced well last season, and he just didn't get a lot of playing time. As I said, he was a young guy. We had a lot of receivers in the room. We're going to have a lot of them in the room again this year. But I think that Ray Ray is definitely a sleeper pick, and I think he has a bigger year. I think he does. Rashard gone, Ray Ray moves up. This just it it makes total sense. This one's almost too easy, in my opinion. Don't want to get Restrepo killed on special teams, though. I agree. I agree. I think that you relieve Restrepo of the special teams duty and you put Ray Ray out there. Because obviously Restrepo is going to get a lot of snaps during the game. He's gonna be out there. He's gonna want to be out there. Put Ray Ray out there on special teams. Give him a chance to give us some favorable field position. He's not going to fair catch as many. He's going to try to take it to the house. He's got the speed. Tough to get Restrepo and Ray Ray on the field at the same time. Exactly. Yeah, I know. I know because they're both going to be in the slot. But Restrepo is going to need a breather from time to time. And again, that's why we talk about special teams. Miami needs a spark in the special teams department. Kicking is fine. But we need that guy returning punts and kickoffs for touchdowns. And special teams is super important to me. And that's why I still have him as a spring sleeper. I'll take Chris Johnson at punts and kickoffs. Yeah, Chris Johnson would be another one. I would probably put Chris Johnson more for a kickoff. I don't know who else back there. Chris Johnson and someone else for kickoffs, and then Ray Ray for punts. I'd prefer to see Ray Ray as a punt returner. I think he could do well. And my final pick for a spring sleeper, I'm kind of curious then, though, Briley, if you would be open and honest with me. See, if I ask a Florida State fan this question, they're probably not going to be honest with me. Who then would you have as potential spring sleepers for Miami? I'm curious. I know JoJo Trader is incoming freshman, but trust me, uh, he is that dude. No hate to any of the receivers. No, I do believe that JoJo is a playmaker. I just don't believe that with this coaching staff's approach that JoJo will see a ton of playing time, at least 
not early in the season. I mean, I, I would almost put money on it that right out of the gate, I mean, we're going to see Restrepo, Jacoby George, and probably Horton. That's probably going to be your top three wide receivers. Mario throwing a, a freshman out there at that receiver position, we're going to see. Maybe he really is that next level type of guy. Maybe he is somebody that can earn Mario's trust through the spring practices and you know throughout summer and going into fall. But we'll see. We'll see. I just it's very tough for me to believe that Mario's going to throw some freshmen out there. It's tough. What if there is an injury? Well, I mean that's that's always something that could happen. Definitely, that's always something that could happen. But that's the, that's kind of the unknown. You have to assume it's not because you just don't know. You just never know. Krista Ball's nephew. I'm just going to ask, is Lou Cristobal a spring sleeper? <laughs> Chalupa! Here it comes. Here it comes. Let's wait for it. Let's hold on. Hold on. Let's wait for it. There it is. Just woke up from a monster nap. But wait a minute. Are you Eastern time zone? Ah, it's Friday night. It don't matter, right, Chalupa? I bet you've busted your butt all week long. I see how hard you work. You literally never sleep. So you, I understand. You got to get those naps in when you can. That actually makes perfect sense. It's about to be the weekend. It's time to, to party. Have a good time. I get it. I get it. I'm central, but work has been kicking my butt this week. Fair. I feel you, man. I'm exhausted because we adopted a new dog. It has nothing to do with work for me. I, I promised five plus videos this week, Chalupa, and I posted one because on a whim, we adopted a dog at the beginning of the week. <laughs> and bro, I'm exhausted. I'm so tired. New puppy. I can show him if you want. I figured I would show him at the beginning, middle, and end for people who just like come in. But he, he's, he's about a year and a half old. Yeah, I'll show him. I'll show him. I was going to wait for it to read your thing right quick. I I appreciate I appreciate it, man. This is what it takes. I appreciate the two. To where to you on the side of your helmet. C O O O O O O O O O O O O O P raising hands. Medium dark skin tone raising hands. Medium dark skin tone raising hands. Medium dark skin tone. Raising raising hands. Hands. Medium dark skin tone. <laughs> That's how I know it's Chalupa. It's always at least 3. Bare minimum of 3. Chalupa, I appreciate the $1.99. Uh, I'll, br I'll bring the doggo back in here, and uh, I'll show you. He's he he's he's something. He's something. Uh, Thomas Carter, I apologize. I missed your Canes fan membership, bro. Eight months. Max needs a Canes bandana. I agree. I agree. I think he does. I appreciate you, bro. Eight months of support. Appreciate that, man. We'll get and we'll get a list. We'll get like a full list at the end because I want to see how your spring sleeper list compares to mine. Right now, mine is linebacker Cam Pruitt, tight end Elijah Arroyo, quarterback Reese Poffenbarger, and wide receiver Ray Ray Joseph. And I have one more coming. And remember that everybody's spring sleeper list would be for different reasons. So just like when people say, Coop. Ray Ray's not going to see a lot of play time because Restrepo is going to eat up most of those snaps. That's very true. But again, I think he can be very impactful on special teams, assuming that they put him back there for kick return or punt return. And sleeper, what I mean by sleeper is not a lot of people are talking about them. I'm not seeing Ray Ray's name pop up on stuff from fans, even though the coaching staff is praising how he's been performing at practice. So again, remember, it can be for different reasons depending on each person's list and the player. And same goes for Pruitt. Again, you know, freshman, young guy, staff is very high on him. 
some question marks in that linebacker room. So has an opportunity. And I'm not seeing a ton of people throw out the name Cam Pruitt. I'm I'm not. But maybe other people are. John O'Mara. 19 months. Congrats on the new family member. He's part of your family too, John. He's part of your family too. So keep that in mind. Appreciate the love, man. I'm, I've been distracted tonight a lot, Chalupa, because of the, the doggo. He's coming in and out, and he, he's trying to get familiar with the house. It's only been three days. I normally am more prepared with notes. So I've been telling people if I seem off tonight, I feel like I have some kind of excuse for every stream. If I seem off tonight, the doggo's got me distracted. So Chalupa, seal of approval. Let's see. Let's see if he approves. Ultimate sleeper is Elijah Lofton. Brings another dimension plus Arroyo. Bro, I would love to see Lofton and Arroyo on the field at the same time. That'd be crazy. And I'm really excited to watch Lofton. Again, kind of almost a hybrid type guy. So it'd be very interesting to see how that plays out. Assuming that Dawson gets the tight ends involved, like we keep saying, you know. So uh, l let me call him in here. Hold on. Let me call him in here right quick. And then we'll get back to the list because I do have one more spring sleeper. And then I want to go through the list that you guys have. Ooh, and we got some FSU fans. Others are afterthoughts from the mainstream focus. Got it. We're going to take a look at them, Briley. We'll take a look at them. We'll see if we can get him to come in here. Hey, Mac. Y'all come in again? All right, Chalupa. Here we go. Or for anyone else just coming in, Norman. What's good, Norman? With the big 15. My man, I see you showing everybody love, Kane's content creators. And that, that means the world to me. That means the world to me, Norman. What's good, fam? Lofton would be a killer at Wildcat, wouldn't he? Wouldn't he? Dang. Okay. Okay. Give me something to think about, Norman. All right. Appreciate the 15, man. Robot lady will read it out here in just a second. So here we go. Chalupa, we're going to show you the new member of the family and see what you think. I would like to let you know that his full name, his full name is Maxwell Wigglesworth. He prefers to be called Sir Maxwell Wigglesworth, but I'll leave that up to you. We'll swap over. There he is. <laughs> he's still getting used to being on camera. So when I shove a camera in his face, he's a little unsure about it. But his his official name is Maxwell Wigglesworth. We're probably going to end up calling him Max most of the time. Hey, Max. This is what it takes. To you, to you on the side of your the helmet. Treat fund. Here, we'll give him one What's now. good fam Lofton would treat? be a killer at Wildcat. You want a treat? Can you see it? Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. So we adopted him. Uh, he's about He's about a year and a half. But we adopted him from the shelter, so we don't know a ton about him. All we know is the shelter found him injured in the road. And uh, we don't know what the extent of his injuries were. But they got him fixed up, and he, he had been at the shelter for several months. And they said no one had looked at him because they thought he looked too mean and scary. So people didn't want to sit with him. People didn't want to meet him. They couldn't get anyone to foster him. Because they just thought he looked like a mean dog. And I think it's because whoever had him before had his ears clipped. I'm personally not a fan of that. I, I wouldn't do that. But that's how he was when we got him. And it makes him look kind of aggressive. He's not. We had a Siberian Husky before this. And she was way more aggressive than he is. He's not food aggressive. He's not toy aggressive. All he wants to do is get in your face and smother you with kisses. That's it. And he wants treats. He wants treats. 
You want another one? Here, this this one's from this one's from Chalopa. You ready? There you go. Good boy. Good boy. Yep. Welcome, guys. He's he's part of your family. <laughs> he's part of your family now. Look at that face. Does that look mean? Would you guys say that's mean? Oh, did you chew it? How can someone look at that and say, wow, he looks too mean. We're not interested. That's not, that doesn't even cross my mind when looking at him. And he just hangs out in here. That's why I'm distracted. <laughs> he just wants to hang out. He just wants to be around people. But that that's why I'm extra extra distracted tonight. I'm gonna open the door back up real quick so he can go back and forth. But he man, we love him so far. Only three days, man. Oh, he's a cuddler. He is. He is. We popped up on the couch earlier today because we'd had a long day. And he'll just he'll just nuzzle right in between you. And he just loves just hanging out. But it just it blew my mind. They were like, Yeah, do, do, we went there and we're like, we want to look at some dogs. And they're like, nobody's looking at him. And as soon as he walks in the room, he just tackled us and just started kissing us all over. And it's just like the sweetest dog out of all the dogs we sat with. And it was quite a few of them. He he just loves people. He loves people, man. And we gave him his last name, Wigglesworth, is because he gets the wiggle butt. And he just his tail just goes a million miles per hour when he sees people. We've had strays and rescues. They're great companions. It's wild how different it is. Missy B in the building. Good to see you. It's wild how how much he's just looking at us like for direction. Like, I don't know if it's just whatever breed he is or if it's part of being a shelter dog and he's like extra grateful. Like if he understands what's going on, I don't know. But everything he does, he looks at me or my wife for approval. I've never had a dog do that before. They just always kind of do what they want. And if they get in trouble, they get in trouble. Before he does anything, he's like, is this okay? Is this fine? Can I, can I do this? And then I'm like, yeah, you can do that. And then like he's all happy and excited. And if we have to tell him he can't do something, he doesn't pout about it. He just he just doesn't do it and he moves on. So I'm I'm super thankful to have him. It's just an adjustment because we've not had a dog in four years. We've never had a dog at this house. So it's it's been kind of a little chaotic and we got a dog proof everything and he keeps trying to chew my camera wire. So we'll have to figure all that stuff out. But let me let me open the door and then and we'll get to my last pick. Good job, buddy. But for real, I, I appreciate you guys being patient with all that. I, I was originally going to cancel the stream tonight, and I was like, no, nah, like, let, let's hang out for a couple hours on a Friday. Come on now, because I look forward to this so much. Uh, and I was like, it'll be fine. They won't care. Well, some of you might, but <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, so again, Norman, thank you for the 15. I appreciate you. Wondering what the camera is, and yay, food. Yep, beautiful dog, Coop. Yeah, man, I love him. I'm not going to lie. I also have pits and an American bully, so I don't think any big dogs are mean. Chihuahuas, on the other hand, yeah. Those will get you. Yeah, those, the, those, the little chihuahuas, the mean, the mean little shits. I'm just going to be honest. Whew. This was a rough week. That good dog energy just made my day, Coop. He's the happiest of boys, Chalupa. He's happy to be adopted. He looks just like me, Coop. What's that mean? If I if I look like him, I might have to walk around like this. Because he's swole, man. Boy, he is swole. Yeah, them them filthy stinking yappers, ankle biters. Yeah, man. I want me a big dog. I want me a dog I can get in the floor and wrestle with. You know what I mean? Get him in a headlock and, and he's biting my arm. And I, I sumo plex him and then he ju he jumps off the uh, the top rope body slams me. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I like. Do I have cats? I do not. So the the uh, the wild 
stray cat that was running around our property disappeared. So I don't know what happened with him, but he, he didn't show up anymore. Your dog's right to wrestle with you and kick your ass. So he's gone. When he puts on a little bit of weight, he's going to be able to probably manhandle me. Yep. So my last spring sleeper pick for tonight's stream. As I said, short, this is probably going to be a relatively short stream for me. Is one that, again, some people are going to argue is not a sleeper pick. And I knew there would be some pushback with my list. And I'm here for it. It's fine. But my final one is actually defensive tackle Marley Cook. I have him on the list for the same reason that I have some of these other guys on the list. It's because not as many people are talking about him. Everybody's talking about C.J. Clark, the NC State transfer. I'm seeing a lot of people talk about Harrison Hunt and some other guys. Again, this doesn't mean that I believe that Marley Cook will start over any of those guys. But I do think he is a bit of a potential sleeper pick. This guy is strong. I don't think anyone can deny that. He broke the Miami squat record just a couple of weeks ago. He's very explosive. He does have a shorter frame, which is why I think some people aren't talking about him. But you have to keep in mind that that makes it tough to get low on him. Not many big guys are going to be able to do that. Uh, I do like that when while he was at MTSU, he didn't just have tackle stats. He also had an interception. He had two forced fumbles and a fumble recovery. Again, keeping in mind that he's competing with guys like C.J. Clark, Harrison Hunt, and some other dudes for that inside position. However, coaching staff really likes Marley Cook a lot, and I do have him down as a, a potential spring sleeper because I'm not seeing his name thrown out there. I'm just being real. I'm really not. I'm seeing the coaching staff be high on him. We know we have to, you know, dissect like what's coach speak and what's them just, you know, you know we know how it works. They're only mostly going to say good things, the, the normal generic responses. But I have Marley Cook as my final spring sleeper. Uh, Zach Jones, what's up? Hope you're doing well today, bro. Sorry I'm late. You are, hey, fashionably late is the only way to be. Zach Jones, you know how I feel about that. That's the only way to be. But Marley Cook, he, as I said, shorter frame, he's about six foot two. Uh, he's known to be a bully out there. Typically in the trenches, we're recruiting the big boys, more specifically, especially on the O-line. But a little bit on the shorter side. But if you watch this guy play, if you watch this guy play, he's fun to watch. He He's fun to watch. And that's fine. If we, we can agree to disagree, Briley. That's fine. That's fine. So that's my five. Linebacker Cam Pruitt. Tight end Elijah Arroyo. Quarterback Reese Poffenbarger. Wide receiver Ray Ray Joseph. And defensive tackle Marley Cook. I gave my reasons behind each one of them. But now what I would like to know is some spring sleepers from you guys. What are some players for whatever reason? It, your definition of spring sleeper could be different than mine and everyone else's. And that's perfectly fine. But I want to know who you think maybe that the fans are sleeping on potentially. It doesn't mean that you think they're going to start. So someone's going to say, well, my, my pick is Riley Williams at tight end because I believe that he's going to jump Arroyo. It doesn't have to be about their position on the depth chart. It can be just because when they do come in, even if it's limited snaps, they make it very impactful. They make a difference. Or it could purely be because you think the guy's putting in a lot of work and he's not getting recognition from the fan base can be a lot of different reasons. Who do you guys have? It can be one, two, three, five. It's only one week into spring practice. We're literally down three out of 15. So it's tough to say. But do you guys have any? I want to open it up and see if you guys have any. Who does... Uh, I know Chalupa had some. I know Briley had some. Let's see. Where are they at? Where are they at? All 
I know I saw some. Hold on. It's before the dog stuff. Uh, there it is. All right. Chalupa Spring Sleepers. We're going to start from the bottom and, and work our way back up here. Robbie Washington. Oh, yeah. And see? Perfect. Thank you for putting Robbie Washington on the list, Chalupa, because Robbie Washington is that example of I'm not seeing his name thrown out there a lot by the fan base. Everybody's talking about the shiny new toys, which is understandable, but I'm not seeing his name thrown out there by many fans. Popo, okay. Caleb Spencer and Shamar Kirk. Ooh, Kirk is another one. I hope that Kirk earns more playing time this season. We were pretty hype on him last year, Kirk and Harrell. Harrell really wasn't able to take that speed and have it translate to the football field. Like Just purely being fast isn't enough to make you a great football player, right? So unfortunately, he really wasn't able to, to put that together and be a big difference maker on the field. But maybe Shamar Kirk. What is it you guys call him on your shows, Chalupa? What is it? Is it Shimmy? Is Shimmy Shamar? I think you guys interviewed him very early on your channel or the You Heard channel. And I think you guys called him like Shimmy Shamar or something, and he liked it. I remember he liked the name. Let's see what Briley has from a Florida State fan. So Brown at DB, AJ Allen at running back, and Cooper and Zach Carpenter on the O-line. These are guys that need to take a big step to justify the hype. Some are talking about Carpenter, but the others are afterthoughts from the mainstream focus. That's fair. A lot of people are talking about Carpenter just purely due to the size. He's what, six foot eight, six foot nine ish, somewhere around in there. So obviously that's going to generate some attention. But outside of him being a literal giant, you're kind of right. You know, you don't hear a whole lot of people talking about him. Uh, Cooper stepping up. Yep. Yeah, and then Damari and AJ Allen. Okay. All right. Who else we got? Who else we got? Inch Kane says JoJo will be in the starting lineup by midseason. I still just don't know how I feel about that. I think he's capable of it. Again, I just don't know if the coaching staff will pull the trigger. You think they will? I don't know. I'd like the thing is, JoJo's popping off already in spring. Like he, he's putting in that work and he's showing out a bit. I think he needs a little more time to get a little stronger, adjust a bit, but he has the rest of the offseason to do that. So he could be ready. He could be ready. But will the coaching staff put him on the field? What are you looking for, Joey? Oh, why did my word where, the prepubescent Joey? Where'd that come from? I'm seeing what you're putting, Joey, but I'm, I must have missed what you put before that. Come on, Coop. Can anyone see me typing? Did I miss something? Biggest spring sleeper is Mr. Wigglesworth. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I'm glad you guys like him. Michelle Powell is your sleeper. Okay. All right. He definitely has to step up big, right? Like you just played for Washington, who played in the national championship. You got to come to Miami and you got to show out. But it's an interesting situation with him, right? Because I know originally they were talking about him at safety. But then now they were talking about Riley and it wasn't Mark Keith. Who else was it? They were talking about him being... They were talking about Mish at nickel. Riley at safety. And then I can't remember who else they were talking about. Dang, I can't remember who it was. Was it Harris? Was it Harris? I think it might have been Chalupa. I think it was they were talking about a potential combo of Jaden Harris and Savion Riley at safety and then potentially Mish at nickel. It's going to be fun because, again, spring is, is partially about experimentation. 
So they're trying to take guys, I know this goes without saying, but rotating them around, you know, giving them some different looks and, and seeing what works and what doesn't. So that's going to be interesting to watch. Samson Oaken Lola. Okay. He needs to come out and, and, and do well. Exactly. Because he Oaken Lola was coming off of the injury, correct? So he has a little something to prove and try to battle for a starting spot. I think a lot of people want to see Oaken Lola over Lou Cristobal. I would say. I think that a lot of people are probably saying that. And I agree with the take. I heard some other people say that he's got to earn it. So star rating alone is not going to just earn you the starting job. You got to come out. You got to have a good spring and beyond. So he's going to have to earn it. So we'll see. The Ray Ray and JoJo connection. I like Powell playing that Jaden Davis role. True. True. I really like Mish. I like Mish a lot. If if you watch his his interviews, I know a lot of people don't care about this because all they care about is is the football side of things, and that's fine. Have you seen any of the Mish interviews, Chalupa? Like I can't help but smile anytime I hear that dude speak. He's so energetic. He's so positive. He's very well spoken. Like he he just he gives off. I, I I'm a I'm a, I'm a good dude kind of vibe like everybody wants to be around him you know people will rally behind him like he's just overall just seems like a really really good guy i really like mish a lot i'm very happy that he's a cane you like the mish interview me too man me too popo is definitely a sleeper in the linebacker room popo's gonna popo might do a little something something you know what i'm saying uh, Chris Johnson, the speedster. That running back room is just so interesting. Like if if Citizen stays healthy, and he can overcome that mental hurdle, Citizen's got to be up there pretty high up on the depth chart, doesn't he? Like uh, Parrish, of course, is going to get a bulk of the carries. Fletcher, when he's healed up. We'll have to see if he misses the first part of the season or not. But if Citizen is who Citizen can be, who we think that that guy is when he's 100% healthy, if he gets over the mental hurdle with those injuries, he's got to be up there, right? Right? It's just so tough, though, because you have uh, Wheatley Humphrey. You have Johnson. Bro, I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Kane's D is looking to put Miami offense in a lot of shootouts. It's it's possible. We're gonna have to see. Miami's pretty pretty beaten and banged up at some positions, and it's the thing is it's March, so it's it's tough to say where we really stand when the season gets here. And again, they're gonna attack the transfer portal a bit. There's gonna be an exodus. They're going to bring some guys in at positions of need. So the team could look a little different by the time we kick off against the Gators. I love having him in that DB room. That kind of guy is great for the young guys to learn. Yeah, I mean, just experience that, you know, really none of those other guys can talk about playing in a national championship. I understand that they lost it, but they were there. Like, he was there, you know? So he, he could definitely be a mentor, and especially with his kind of positive attitude and just all-around energy. Excellent dude to have in that locker room. Mish would be excellent cam replacement, but he will stay at nickel. I agree. I think that's probably how they use him. Yep. What's up, Justin? Good to see you, my man. That you looking good. That you looking good by your name, Justin. Chop a gal in the building. Cristobal wants an experienced running back from the portal. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't really know what his approach is going to be with the portal. I know he's huge on experience. I know a lot of coaches are. But it's going to be interesting to see how he attacks that. And I, I, I agree, Dudu. 
I think I know that it's tough to really say that, and it's why I I try to not backpedal. But because you know, citizen, uh, there's so much hype and hope. The hype and hope for citizen every off season is so high. But then at the end of the day, he's really not seen a lot of snaps at the college level. So we're gonna have to see. We know Gidry will make use of what he has. I love how he uses different guys to try and get the best out of them, like how he used Flag last year. True. I'm not worried about the coaching side. I agree. I I think that Gidry did pretty well, all things considered, last season. It was year one. And I agree. I agree. I think he will make the most out of what he's got. Well said. Any more? Any more? Any more spring sleepers? As I said, I was very unprepared. I knew that I would be. That was kind of the theme of the night. It was, it was meet, meet the new doggo family member. Go through the PowerPoint presentation of the five spring sleepers. And that was the stream. Jaden Wayne. Yo. You know, I probably should have put Jaden Wayne on my spring sleepers. I actually probably should have. And a lot of people, this you want to know why I didn't, Chalupa? To where you? I'll tell you why I didn't I'm here in just a second. For the Treats Fund, welcome to the family, Maxwell Wigglesworth. Stephanie! Let me tell you what. <laughs> Sir Maxwell Wigglesworth will definitely thank you. Stephanie, because we were just talking about how we want to take him somewhere tomorrow. We want to take him to maybe the park or somewhere to go for a walk to run off some of his energy. And you know, especially considering the fact that that went straight to the PayPal, we should probably make a pit stop maybe for a pup cup from like Sonic or Starbucks. And then maybe PetSmart for some new treats. I think that'd be a good idea. Stephanie, thank you for the big 50. I appreciate the love. Maxwell Wigglesworth will thank you with some more butt wiggles when he gets his new tree. I, what I'll do, Stephanie, I'll text you a picture. How about it? I'll text you a picture of whatever we get him and, and me giving him one. I got a doggy. I did. We finally did, Tropical. And what I'm going to do, I've sh I showed him at the beginning. I showed him maybe 20, 30 minutes ago, and then I was going to show him again at the end of the stream. Malik Bryant. Now, Malik Bryant is one. A lot of people keep saying, where's the Malik Bryant talk? So that is a good reason to kind of have him on the list if you feel like that he can have a good spring and come out and, and make an impact. Show, show Sir Max again. Mama Coop, what are you doing up? It's 10.30 on a Friday. Definitely spoil him. All right, let's bring him in again. All right, Tropical, I'm, I'm bringing him in again. Let me go get him. <laughs> he is. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. I really do plan on integrating him a lot. I told you my plan is every single week, he's going to pick which team is going to win, Miami or our opponent. And I'm going to put his picks against my picks. And we're going to see who gets closer. And I think we know who it's probably going to, who it's probably going to end up being, let's be honest. Because with Miami, it's basically a toss-up. You throw the numbers out the window. Uh, previous history, you know, you can break it down, run the numbers. It's usually a 50-50 a toss-up. So... Uh, let me go get him. Let me go get him. Max. They want to give you more treats. Come on. Come on. You're the star of the show. They don't, they don't, they don't care about me anymore. All right. This is gonna we're gonna change it to the the coach Maxwell Wigglesworth show. 
All right, are you ready, Tropical? Are you prepared for cuteness overload? He was asleep. But it's going to be worth it. He's going to be excited for the treats. Let's swap over. Here we go. I, realistically, though, guys, I want him to be excited when he comes in here. The dog we had in the past, our Siberian Husky, some of you might remember her, she was scared to come in my stream room. Because, you know, there was sirens and yelling and jumping up and down and stuff getting broke. I want him to like being in here. Like, I, I want him to just chill with me when I'm recording videos and stuff. So, here he is, Tropical. His full name is Maxwell Wigglesworth. He's a little sleepy butt right now. There he is. Here, we'll give him a treat. We'll give him a treat. He's about a year and a half. We adopted him from a shelter about three days ago. Here, we'll give him a treat. Here, this is from Stephanie and Tropical. Come here. There he is. Look at him stanced up. He's such a good boy. Good boy. There you go. All right, how cute is he, Tropical? It is Sir Maxwell Wigglesworth. Yep. He must be addressed properly. He's sleepy, though. I see if he would fight. This is what it takes to where to you. On the side of your helmet. This is for Puppy Cane. Man, he's too sleepy. Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Yep, 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 yep. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. But yeah, Tropical, he has, uh, he's claimed the couch. So all future episodes of Final Thoughts and Couch Coop Confessions, I will probably have a dog go beside me because that is now his. You want one more? You want one more before you go? Yeah? Okay. One more from the stream. From the, the college football family, all right? I want you to love them. Okay, sit. Good boy, he already knows. He already he already knows to sit. <laughs> we almost named him Nibbler. He likes to nibble you. Especially when you're fighting. But that's we saw that. We saw the, the tail the tail wags. And we had to go with Wigglesworth. He's just tired. He's, he's had a long week. It's been a, a pretty wild week for him. Let me, let me put him back out real quick. I'll be right back. Right, come on. Good boy. Good boy. Like I said, I've just, I've never had a dog just take off and just be good from the jump. Like, he he just he's just so good. I don't I, I don't know what to do. He just he does what you tell him to do. He he goes to bed when you go to bed. You take him out. He goes to the bathroom. Like it's wild. I'm I'm not used to that. Does Poffenbarger pass Jakari on the depth chart? I think it's a a two A two B. Again, I think unless he just surpasses him just beyond belief i think it's a, an and or or he goes at three because jakari has what the experience that's just my opinion tropical thank you for the 305 i see what you did there this is for puppy cane he's gonna get some new treats tomorrow for sure he's already been absolutely smothered in toys and different treats what a cutie patootie 
<laughs> Max is already a fan favorite. Good. I told everybody that he's your dog too. We're all family, so he's also your dog. Yeah, I don't expect to see a lot out of Blunt either, Briley. I don't expect to see a lot out of Blunt this season for multiple reasons. It's it's no hate or shade. Um but not not in twenty twenty four. Watching me, still hanging out watching me, Mama Coop. The question is, will Sir Maxwell put his milk bones where his muzzle is? When FSU beats Miami, will he wear an FSU bandana? Oh my. Do we do we do we get Maxwell in on the bets? He's going to be a Canes fan. Obviously. He's obviously going to be a Canes fan. I honestly, for real though, guys, I have nothing else. That's all I've got. You love a good bet. What? And then I have, I, what? So I have to put a Florida State bandana on my dog. It, he'll hate it. He'll absolutely hate it. I can already, I know he would. I know he would. That was easy. I'm going to be using that button this year, Henry. I appreciate that. Exactly. What a terrible thing to do to a dog. Who who in their right mind would put a Florida State bandana on a dog? Go See, John says he'll call PETA. Yep. Dog abuse. <laughs> He's going to piss all over the FSU bandana. I like that idea, Chris. I lay it out like I'm about to put it on him if that were to happen, which it won't, but if it were to happen. And then he, he, he just takes a leak on it. I like that. FS poop. We got my sister a dashing and he and named him Renegade. He's the goodest boy for a toy dog. I'll let it pass because I'm sure he's I'm sure he's 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 a good boy. He'll chew it up. Max knows what's up. He does. He's all cane. He's all cane, Chalupa. He will piss when he sees it like his master. On that note, um, I, again, I mean, that's about it for tonight's show, I think. I'm just really looking forward to the rest of spring. You know, we can get into full pads here soon and more updates, kind of see how guys are, are continuing to hopefully improve. And then fingers crossed that some of these guys that are missing the first part of spring slowly actually start to be integrated back in. Guys like Mesador, who's missing some valuable reps, Allen, and a lot of guys. Honestly, a lot of guys. Uh, Damari, hopefully they can work Damari back in. But you don't want them to rush. You know, obviously, you don't want to make injuries any worse. Uh, but I just hate that some of these guys are missing these reps during spring. She was mad we named him for her, but got used to it. <laughs> We all expect you to put some Adidas swag on Max. We'll find something. We'll find something. There, there has to be some Miami dog gear. There has to be, right? Yeah, there's, there's got to be. Here comes Joel on the tail end of this thing. We're going to have to times three him. Joel Davis! Times three, times three, times three. <laughs> Wrong button. <laughs> or maybe the right button, since it is a Florida State fan. Maybe the right button. Joel with another 99.99. I press. I saw the Florida State logo by his name, and I pressed the FSU button on my soundboard. What can I say? Will I be at the spring game? Unfortunately, not. So I, I've been telling, I've been telling Chalupa, Miss CB, that we have 
to link up for a game. Last season, uh, I went to the Clemson game, and I got to link up with so many people. Uh, it was me, Chris Gaffney, his wife, and Melissa went to Flanagan's after the Canesware meetup. So we went out and grabbed a bite to eat. To you? On game day, I got to hang out with Stephanie, Computer Tropical, um, Melissa, Chris, and his wife. And then I probably met somewhere along the lines of two to 300 people. Doo hung out with us. Juice hung out with us. It was it was crazy. It was so much freaking fun. So, so much fun. Uh, so me and Chalupa have to link up because you guys are going down for the spring game, right? I couldn't make the trip just because I have too much stuff like keeping me here for the spring game. But I, I do want to make it down to Hard Rock. No, you hit the right button. He's a Florida State fan. I agree. For real, Joel, with the computer money, I'm still working on making it happen, and I will make it happen because we're lining it up. We're doing these college football 25 streams. 1v1. You want to talk trash? You want to show the people what's up? You say you're good at the game? Show me. Beat me. Let's play live. I just got to get that new computer first. Uh, which is going to happen. It's going to happen. Joel, mad respect. Appreciate the love. That's what everything's going towards right now. So I appreciate that, bro. Maybe some dog treat. Maybe some dog treats too, though. Maybe. I was gonna say, what about me? We can't forget about doo doo. Doo doo. Doo doo's at the end in the intro when I pan over and he's like, "Let's go." <laughs> doo doo was hot a couple times in that Clemson game. I remember looking over doo doo because it was me, and then Chris and his wife were to my left, and then Melissa, aka Hoodie Girl, was in the seat directly to my right. And then Doo Doo was one seat over from that. And then behind me was Stephanie, Tropical, Juice, Don Calderalo, and a couple of other people. And I looked over a few times in that game, and y'all, Doo Doo was posted up like this right here. He what? His butt wasn't even down in the seat. His butt was up on top of the 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 backrest, and bro, he looked so pissed. He he, he arms crossed. Shaking his head, could, couldn't even put his butt in the seat. Doodoo was, he got heated a couple times, man. But boy, we got to celebrate with that overtime victory. We're planning on being being there this year. You guys will have a blast. It'll it'll be so much fun. I know it for the spring game, I know I think the you heard guys are gonna be there. I'm sure Dono will be there. Uh it'll, it'll be fun. It'll be super fun. It's hard for me to stay seated during a game. Yo, we got to do it like we did for the Clemson game. What we did is I like to sit up high, and there there obviously aren't as many people up high. So what we did is like three or four of us had seats together, and then everyone else just came and sat up there. So we all, we all just sat together. It was It was so fun, bro. It was so fun. And I want to do that again after the Canesware meetup. So I was like, hey, if you want to hang out at Canesware, you know, you could shop around the store. We'll hang out out front. They've got a, you know, a big area we can all walk around. And we all hung out for like three hours. And then we hit up Flanagan's after. It, it was so dang fun. Can we all meet up just for a game? I mean, yeah, that's that's the plan. That's the plan. You can pre-order the game now. I need to do it. I just don't know what console yet. Not sure what console. Shenanigans shall be endless. Imagine the content, Chalupa. I mean, number one, just getting to hang out in person. I mean, uh, we we have a lot of similar interests. You know, Marvel stuff, anime stuff, gaming, Miami Hurricanes football. I feel like sometimes, please like take this as as a compliment, not in a weird way. Please don't take this in a weird way. I see a lot of me when I watch you. And I see a lot of you when I watch me. And I just mean like you're pretty positive. I like to be pretty positive. You like anime. I like anime. 
Same thing I, I used to say back in the day, Chalupa. People used to make fun of me because they said, Coop, what a loser. You're not cool enough to be a Miami content creator. You have literal Pokemon in your background. So you want to know what I told him, Chalupa? You want to know what I told him? Oh, you can't see it. <laughs> I said, I'm going to like what I like. I like anime. I like gaming. I like Pokemon. I also like football. I'm going to like what I like. But I, I have to get a new console. I do. I do. Yep. Thomas likes anime. Yo, I'm watching Free Run right now, but I need I need that new Doro Hidoro season, and I need Jujutsu Kaisen to hurry up and get that new season done because they're saying like two plus years. I need it now. I can't. Yo, I need it now. PS5. Most of you are going to be playing on PS5. Yeah, I know most of you are playing on PS5. MHA is almost done. It's killing me. This final arc is years long. Is that uh, MHA? My Hero Academia? I haven't watched that one yet, if that's what it is. I need to watch that. Uh, I've been told it's one of the best new animes. Uh, Jujutsu Kaisen is top three for me. Jujutsu Kaisen is up towards the top of the list, bro. It's so good. It's so freaking good. My literal background, look at this. Um, my wallpaper on my computer is uh, Yuji Itadori from Jujutsu Kaisen. Love it, love it, love it, man. I didn't think I was going to like it, and I I loved it, bro. And I'm, I'm so excited that Doro Hidoro is getting another season. A lot of people don't know about Doro Hidoro. Demon Slayer is coming back. I got some catching up to do. That warms my heart that a lot of y'all like anime. I don't normally get to talk about this. What I've been trying to do during the off season is take the Friday night streams and make the last half hour-ish small talk. We can talk gaming, anime, continue to talk football. We can talk about your, your pets. I don't care. I want it to be a little more personal, like to finish up the stream. I caught up on One Piece this year. That was a commitment. I'm One Piece terrifies me. I look at that episode list, Chalupa, and I say, nah, maybe next year we'll revisit that. And I always get to the same part. I get to that part where the, the chick joins their party. Uh, shoot. I don't remember her name. And the dude has like the big dog. No, maybe not the big dog. There's the little dog that worked at the food store. It's so early. It's a couple episodes in. And you know, like he's like super sad. And then that guy has like the big cat or the big dog. And the dog is going to fight it. I don't, I don't remember. I, I get to that same part every time and then I never get past it. How far is the com computer money going? So I try to not talk about this much because I don't want people to think I'm fishing for donations. The computer I'm going to get is about 3400 and I'm about a grand towards it. So we're not quite halfway there yet, but I have time. I've got, I've got a couple months. As I said, I got to put the work in. I got to put the work in. I've been selling some of my Pokemon and stuff to go towards it. So we'll get there. Is talking about food allowed? Like tacos? Of course. Of course we can talk tacos. Yeah. Yeah. The game better be, it better support cross-platform multiplayer. It would make my life so much easier. I'm thinking PS5 because I also like to sim race, but haven't in a while. That's something I want to get back into. 
Man, what I hate, Chalupa, the only thing is I wish the PlayStation controllers moved that left analog stick up. Swap the D-pad. Like, swap them. Because the Xbox controller just feels so comfortable. And I don't like both of them being at the bottom. I know it sounds backwards, right? Most people would be like placement. Like, coop, thumb placement. Here, here. Like, why do you want to? I, I don't know. My favorite color was green growing up. I kind of... <laughs> right? And I was, I've always been Team Xbox. Coop, what do you always order at Taco Bell? So I order the same thing pretty much every time. Cheesy Gordita Crunch. No lettuce. Extra cheese. Cheesy Roll Up. Extra cheese. Chips and cheese. Occasionally Cinnamon Twist if I'm really hungry, and then a Mountain Dew. That's the go-to. People aren't going to agree that Xbox is superior, Michael. There's, there's not, a lot of, not a lot of Xbox fans. Say go one time, and I'll buy you a PS5. Can't do it. I can't do it. Nope. I, I can't do it, Joe. <laughs> do you want me to be completely honest? You could offer to buy me that $3,400 computer if those words left my lips, and I still won't do it. You want to know why, Joel? Because I root for the greatest team in college football history. Joel, do you see that orange and green lit up, shining bright in the background right here? You see this? I would never betray this. By letting that dirty phrase leave my lips that that little phrase right there is, is a curse word in this household can't do it joel but i believe you you would do it that's what's crazy that some of these people think you wouldn't do it you actually you would you would buy me a ps5 if i say that can't do it can't do it don't sell, sell your soul that cheap. Coop likes cheese. Yes. Yes, I, I do. I love cheese. I don't know what I would do without cheese. We changed football forever. Yep. Have you watched the live action Avatar yet? I'm super hesitant. I, I'm not paying a lot of attention to the reviews because I know how people are. I'm pretty easy to please. We all know that that Avatar movie that came out sucked. This is totally different. Some people say it does it justice. Some people say it doesn't. I'm very hesitant because I don't want it to taint my memory of Avatar, even though it's something separate. I need to remember it doesn't change the, the previous stuff. I can watch it, and then even if I don't like it, it doesn't matter because I have... The other stuff that I like. So I need to just watch it. I should just watch it. Is it good? Coop, Joel's your sugar daddy. I'm, I will be in his will. I am going to be in Joel's will because he bet that Miami can't beat Florida State three years in a row. And he said that if they do, he'll put me in his will. I think it was something like, Joel, didn't you say that you were going to leave everything you own to me. I think that's what he said. I think he said he was going to leave me his house, all of his cars, um, his business. I think I, I think that's what he mentioned because he was pretty confident. Yeah. And I think, he, I think his plan was just to leave everything to me. I'm pretty sure that's what we talked about. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, uh, my I, my memory is great, and I'm pretty sure. You're definitely going to finish it? I need to start it. Three episodes in, there are some differences that started to bother me, but it's way better than the movie. Dang, okay, I need to watch it. I'm guessing it's kind of condensed. They're probably trying to cram a lot in. Have you seen Dune 2? I, I ain't seen Dune 1. It's on my watch list, though. I do want to watch it. But I, I haven't seen Dune 2. If you don't believe him, you're crazy because he literally drops 300 a stream. Joel's a man of his word. Yeah, he, he definitely is. That's what I'm saying. He don't play. He does not play. Dune looks cool. I'm, I'm a fan of like sci-fi. Uh, I'm a fan of most stuff. To be honest. Uh, so I think I would like Dune. But I gotta watch the first one. No more live action animes. Uh, Chalupa, have you ever seen uh, Free Run? I'm watching Free Run right now. And it's not loaded with action. But it's really good. It basically follows this elf mage. And, and her party. After their big grand adventure. So instead of it being about, here's this crazy adventure, go kill this dude who's this ruler over all this stuff, it follows them after the adventure and what and, and, and what happens after that. And it kind of goes through the loss of like, you know, because the, the elf, you know, kind of lives a very long time or forever. And then as your former party members start to fall and die, like how you process that and carry on, it's really good. It's really good. Him and Gaffney don't play, true. Chris don't play either. What's it called? Uh, it's called Free Run. So let me make sure I spell it right. If you look up reviews for this, you'll be pretty impressed. The two that I would recommend, three that I would recommend, Chalupa, is Jujitsu Kaisen first. Bro, please, I'm begging you, give Jujitsu Kaisen a chance. Based on what you've said that you like, when it comes to TV shows and movies. Please, guys, if there is anyone in this stream, even if it's two of you that have watched Jiu-Jitsu Kaisen, please tell Chalupa how much he needs to watch it. You're, you're, you're going to love it, man. You're going to love it. Uh, I lo Man, Toge Inumaki is such a cool character. Um, of course, everybody loves Yuji Itadori. Who else? Sukuna is actually a pretty cool character. You'll like Jiu-Jitsu Kaisen. But free run, it's uh, it's this is what it's spelled. I'll put it in the chat. It's not super um, super action packed, but it's story wise, it's really good. But you need to watch free run, Jujutsu Kaisen, and give Doro Hidoro a shot. I'm telling you, Doro Hidoro is sick. It's so freaking good. And every time I mention Doro Hidoro, people are like, what's that? I've never heard of it. It's really freaking good. But if you look up Freeman, it's it has super, super high reviews. And it's it, it's it deserves it. It really does. What's up, Mike Jones? Mike Jones. Naruto is goaded. I've actually never seen Naruto, believe it or not. Never seen it. Let me know what you think about Jujutsu Kaisen, though. Is it really good, Coop? It's super good. What about Berserk? It's on my list. I've heard that Berserk is kind of dark and messes with your head a bit, which is what I like. Like, I was a huge fan of Death Note and uh, any kind of anime that just makes you question everything. It's very dark. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, I've heard Berserk. People keep telling me watch Berserk for for a dark anime. And that, that's what I want to watch. Yep. It's on the list. This is cool, though. I appreciate you guys humoring me with the small talk to wrap up the stream. During the season, we're, we're all football. You know what I mean? Like, we've got the blinders on. 
it, it, it's preview videos, it's prediction shows, it's call-ins, it's it's game days, reacts, post game because then after we've had time to to let it simmer a bit, the off season's fun for some small talk. I like getting to know you guys. Gundam Iron Blooded Orphans. Is that is that an anime? Gundam Iron Blooded Orphans. Oh, it is. The heck? This looks this looks wild, Chalupa. Yo, that picture. Is that what this is? Yo, this picture looks crazy. Huh. I know a picture alone doesn't tell you all about it, but I have such a long list of stuff I want to check out. PS5 for you, Ghost Horizon, and Final Fantasy games. Have you beaten it yet, Nick? I know you were playing Final Fantasy last week. Yeah, that game does look amazing, Chalupa. That's your show? I'll have to check it out. What about Bleach? I have seen Bleach. I like Bleach, too. Yep. <laughs> no, you're 60 hours in and two-thirds done. Dang, that's a long game. I'm still trying to finish uh, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, my third playthrough, technically. Uh, but I'm close. I'm close to finishing KOTOR, and we we did a, a BFD raid in Season of Discovery last night. You have a a, a ban Bankai mask? I'm going to have to look at it, Chalupa. Yeah, Bleach is good. Bleach is good. I would say based on what I've seen so far, and some of you guys are going to get upset with this, and then I'm, I'm about to wrap the stream up. We're, we're going to bring this thing to a close. <sighs> I don't know if I can give an order, though. I'm going to be honest. I don't know if I can give an order. Because I swear, I'm telling you, Jujutsu Kaisen might be at number one. I If I had to say, I think it would be Jujutsu Kaisen. Death Note. Maybe Attack on Titan. But I know some people are like, Coop, that's a mid-anime. But I thought Attack on Titan was pretty cool. Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. And then maybe Doro Hidora. But dang, I don't know. I don't know. You've watched a lot of uh, lore footage from the KOTOR games. It's, bro, Chalupa, it's literally on my wall. Like, that's how much I love Knights of the Old Republic. I have, I had the box art for Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic on OG Xbox printed onto foam so I could put it on my wall. Look at this. Because I love it that much. And like I said, I, I stream on my Twitch channel. Uh, I'm doing a full KOTOR playthrough. We've been, we've been on it for about a month now. I've been playing it for about a month. I'm about 40 hours in. And uh, that'll be, if if I complete it, which I will, that'll be the third time I beat it. I'm surprised you didn't remember the twist ending. Yep, didn't, didn't, didn't remember it. What nights do you stream on Twitch? It's all over the place, but I try to stream about three nights a week. Usually it's Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. So we've been doing WoW raids and KOTOR. It's what I've been doing lately. But there's a good group of us that do that. I've got a Discord and stuff for it. And uh, like I said, we have a full little group. Cypher's from it. Cypher's from the gaming channel. Justin's from the gaming channel. 
Talking gaming and anime on Coop Channel must be wrapping up. Oh, you're good, uh, The Creeps SD. You're good, man. We're going to start ending the streams with small talk. Greg, it's good to see you. Yep, you missed the Canes talk. You missed the Canes talk, Greg. It was good stuff, bro. It's good to see you, though. Have you played Elden Ring? No. I would beat my head against the wall playing. I don't play this Dark Souls. I don't play Elden Ring. You on the side of your helmet. Consider pet insurance for Sir Maxwell. Probably. Not to be too no, probably. Reddit used Trupanion because they pay vet directly. No, I don't work for them, lol. Since Sir Maxwell is young, it's not that much and you can tailor it. Is LP biggest need coming out of spring? Tucci! Thank you for the big tan straight to the PayPal, Tucci, to wrap this thing up. Uh, I will probably consider that since he is young because I want to give him a good, long, happy life. You know, if we can start him on some kind of vitamins or something so he doesn't get arthritis or, you know, whatever he needs, I'm willing to give it to him. I want to make sure that he's happy and healthy. So I'll look that up. What'd you call it? Trupanion. Trupanion. Okay. I'll look that up. Is linebacker the biggest need coming out of spring? Maybe not, but it kind of depends on how guys heal up. Uh, the cornerback room is pretty thin, but we have some guys that will be coming back from injury possibly. So it might be that cornerback room. It might be that cornerback room. But it, uh, it's so much of it's going to depend on how we finish spring. Because, again, they're thinking that they can work some guys back in. So we have to kind of see how that works. Because there are question marks at linebacker, depending on if some guys step up or not. So we'll see. It's it's tough to answer right now this early. I appreciate the 10, Tucci. Chalupa, have a good night, my man. Have a good night. Have they announced the spring game? So I believe they did. I believe they did. Uh, I know it's going to be at uh, Cobb Stadium. I had the date written down. Jeez, I don't even know what today is. I I know what day it's going to be, but apparently I don't. I don't have it in my notes. My apologies. <laughs> I'll I'll find out. I'll find out again for you. But I'm going to wrap it up. I appreciate y'all for that that hung out for all the small talk. Single top dono of the night. My man Joel Davis with the 9999. Times three. Times three. The man offered me a, a, a PS5 tonight if I would say go N O L E S, which is a dirty word. I'm not going to say that, but you know, I appreciate the offer. Uh, Tucci showed me some love. I appreciate the love tonight, Tucci. Trompa gal, Stephanie with the big 50 straight to the PayPal for Sir Maxwell Wigglesworth, Norman, John O'Mara, Chalupa, Thomas Carter, Chris Gaffney. I appreciate all you guys. Thank you for the love. And I'll have it more together for next week's Friday stream. We'll have another week, second week of spring practice to talk about. And I'll be more uh, on a schedule with the doggo. So I won't feel as flustered. It's not a bad thing. Don't think that I mean it in a bad way. But if I seemed distracted tonight, if I seemed off, if I seemed like I didn't have it all together, it's just been a crazy week. I didn't anticipate actually adopting a dog this week. And it kind of, it changed all of my plans. But I'm super thankful for him. He's been the bestest of doggos. And I'm thankful to you guys for hanging out with me still either way. For the Canes talk, for the small talk, for all of it. I appreciate you guys for the love. Next video will probably be on Sunday, Sunday or Monday. I have a little hypothetical thing I want to talk about with Mario and his wins and losses and talking about some previous coaches and some things that that might mean coming up this season. I'd love to see some feedback on that. And then on Tuesday, we'll do spring practice day four. Full recap. We'll talk about everything that goes down. So, hey, you know what to do. Give me that big fat go canes or rep your squad, you know?
plug it down in the comments. I appreciate the love, y'all. Thank you for, for the family vibes. I really appreciate that tonight. Hey. You know... I'll see y'all soon. Yo, and right quick, I don't know if they want me to shout them out, but it didn't pop up for some reason. Yo, Devin Webb, I appreciate the 1234. Straight to the PayPal, my man. I just saw that. I don't know if, if the robot lady didn't read it out, or it did, just didn't pop up, or what the deal was. But Devin Webb, I just saw that notification on my phone as the outro was playing. Thank you, bro. I appreciate that very much.